you say? What did you say? Can I call my daddy? I'm your daddy. This is the army. Hi, welcome to A Single to the Smiles. Where your smile is your best asset. All right, guys, let's jump right into it. Um, a lot of you, when you think of uh, being a military dentist, you may have an image in mind of what you just saw in that previous frame there. Uh, although that can be a part of uh, what you can expect uh, being in the military, it's not all it's cracked up to be. Right, right exactly. And um, I just want to say, ladies, uh, don't think that you'll be doing female push-ups. <laughs> because I only did it because I'm pregnant. Yeah. So, yeah, you'll be doing real push-ups. I almost made her do the real ones, but then she was like, oh, I don't want to put too much pressure on the fetus. <laughs> so, I was like, okay. Just a quick rundown again on our military history. Yep. Um, I joined the Army National Guard in 2006. I was 17 years old in high school. And I joined in 2009. And when I joined, I had just graduated high school, but I was also 17 years old. We were deployed to Afghanistan in 2012. So being in Afghanistan uh, for that time allowed us to see firsthand um, the day-to-day -day life of a military dentist um, and so what it kind of showed us was that military dentists they operate in a dental clinic on a base which is kind of like a safe haven where all of the uh, soldiers and military personnel stay and their encounter with combat is very slim to none so let's get into the application process yeah so some of you guys might be wondering if you both were in the army why do you have navy scholarships Mm. <laughs> okay, so I'll explain that. Um, we actually both applied for the Army scholarship, but our application didn't quite make it in time. And that's because we both have prior service um, in the military, meaning that we served before um, because we were in the Army. Yeah. And since we were in the Army at the time, there was a lot of paperwork that we had to go through um, that civilian applicants didn't have to. So our process was a lot longer and we weren't prepared for that because we didn't know that we would you know, have so much more requirements. Yeah, in fact, you would expect it to be uh, somewhat easier for us as prior service men and women to get the scholarship and go through the process, uh, but that wasn't the case at all. Exactly. So by the time that we turned in all of our uh, paperwork for the application, all of the scholarships had already run out, unfortunately. So, um, I mean, we knew that we wanted to be military dentists nonetheless, so we just went ahead and applied for the Navy scholarship instead. Um, and luckily that worked out for us. All right, so let's get into some logistics of the whole scholarship process. So the selection board um, meets monthly, beginning in January at the first of every month. And when they convene, uh, they start basically filling up the available spots that they have. So obviously with that being said, it would be uh, in your best interest to try and get your application in as soon as possible. Uh, everything throughout this application process is all about being timely uh, and having your priorities in order. So get those applications in. How do you get those applications in? Seek out a recruiter in your local area. Uh, you can go on Google, uh, type in uh, Army HPSP Scholarship Recruiter or Navy HPSP Scholarship Recruiter. There are also um, Air Force HPSP Scholarship Recruiters as well. So be sure to definitely get your applications in early. And try to get everything in before the first of the month because if anything comes in after the first of the month, then you won't be considered for that month, you'll be considered for the next month. Yeah. Let's talk statistics. The average score that you would need on the DAT to be accepted is a 19 or a 20. Um, and the average GPA can range from 3.4 to 3.6. Obviously, the higher, the better. The higher you score on the DAT, the more room you have for a lower GPA and vice versa. So if you watched our DAT video, then you were able to see our scores that we um, scored on the DAT. So the application process um, 
takes about two months to complete. So there's tons of paperwork. Uh, you have to go and get a physical. Um, so there's a lot of things that you have to do, a lot of items on a checklist that you have to check off. So I would encourage you to uh, start the process if you're interested as soon as possible. Preferably when you start the process of applying to dental school, also start the process of applying for an HPSP scholarship. And if we haven't um, kind of told you what HPSP stands for, it's the Health profession scholarship program. So David kind of hit on it a little bit already um, when he mentioned the physical. So you do have to um, complete a physical at MEPS and MEPS stands for the Military Entrance Processing Station. Um, and they have different ones throughout you know, all the states. So you would have to complete that physical and that calls for them taking your vitals, doing a blood test, um, and completing a drug test, vision, and hearing test as well. So the next um, part of the application process or requirement, I should say, would be the motivation statement. And that statement should be about a page long. And that's where you just explain why you want um, to receive the scholarship, obviously. And so in my statement, I just talked about my history with the military. Obviously, if you don't have a history with the military, you can just kind of mention, I don't know, maybe if your family member has yeah. history, bring that up. Or, you know, just kind of tell them that you always wanted to serve your country, give back to servicemen and women in some way. Um, and it might even help if you say that you want to retire as a military dentist, if you do. Um, so there's a lot of different things you can say, any tips? That yeah. You have. yeah, I would just say like you like you said, I just just to echo what she said, uh, family members that have served, you can pull on 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 those experiences. Uh, and even if you yourself had, you know, always wanted to serve, pull on that. And let's say, for instance, you don't have any of that. Fake it till you make it. <laughs> you you, you got to do what you got to do to get in. So um you know, I wouldn't necessarily say that I had a family member that served if I didn't, but I would say, you know, I've always wanted to serve and give back to my country in some sort of way. And the fact that I'm passionate about dentistry uh, would allow me to kind of fulfill that that passion of mine. Something to that effect. The next requirement, um, you have to get three letters of recommendation. Two would um, come from science professors and then one from um, a personnel in a supervisory role. Mm -hmm. um, and so for that, we asked our biology advisor for a letter and I got a letter from my anatomy professor and my organic chemistry professor. So the next requirement is a federal background check for security purposes since you will be commissioning as an officer. Mm -hmm. So also you want to make sure that you start gathering your birth certificate, your social security card, and transcripts from all universities that you have ever attended. Um, and they also will not accept you for the scholarship until you have a letter of acceptance from a dental school. So once you have everything in and you've completed your physical, you would then have an interview with two military dentists and it would either be Army, Navy, or Air Force depending on the branch that you're applying to. Mm -hmm. um, and so our interviews were with, um, I think one was a captain and one was a lieutenant commander. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and they were pretty laid back. Um, they were both nice and the questions were, you know, just why do you want to be in the military type thing um, and why dentistry, you know, the basics. Yeah, pretty much the, uh, the common questions that you would expect. Um, and if you aren't really sure about uh, some of the common questions that you can expect, uh, we'll definitely be making a video about that, so stay tuned uh, for that. But, uh, but yeah, so like you said, why dentistry? Uh, why the Navy in our case? Um, but for you guys, whether it's the Navy or the Air Force or the Army, they'll be asking why that particular branch. So you just wanna be prepared for those questions that are sure to be asked. Uh, and it's like a traditional interview. You go uh, dressed in formal attire, as you would if you were going to a dental school interview. Uh, you wanna arrive on time, you wanna be professional. Um, yeah, just like a normal interview. Okay. Um, so there are a few uh, medical conditions that can disqualify you from this scholarship. 
Um, I won't get into those because there's so many. Yeah. And I don't want to tell you something and then, you know, you can actually get a waiver for it or whatever. So just make sure if you do have a medical condition that you talk about it with your recruiter just to find out, you know, before you get too deep into the process. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to compare um, the HPSP with the H. CSP and the HCSP is the Health Collegiate Scholarship Pro Program and this is only offered by the Navy at the moment. Um, so David has the HPSP and I have the HCSP scholarship. Mm -hmm. So the HPSP is the Health Profession Scholarship Program. So with the Health Profession Scholarship Program um, it pays for 100% of your tuition and fees. You're also uh, given a monthly stipend in the amount of $2,200 uh, and that could vary uh, depending on when you get the scholarship but it's typically in the neighborhood of about $21 to $2,200 a month. While you're in dental school you don't have any military obligation meaning you don't have to um, go anywhere to take a PT test you don't have to report to uh, a recruiter of any sort. Your job while you're in dental school is to maintain your grades, maintain a good standing in school, um, and graduate on time. When you sign your contract stating that you uh, accept the scholarship, you get a $20,000 sign-on bonus. That's what I received. Now, I will say this, having been in the military for six years prior to getting the scholarship, things change. I'll tell you that things change. So you definitely want to be sure to ask your recruiter when you begin the process if all of these things still stand true uh, at the time that you're applying for the scholarship. And basically you're just a student. You know, you go to school, do what you need to do, and you won't really have any issues. So with the HPSP, the repayment is four years. So the, the Navy will pay four years of your dental school education and in return, you'll have to serve for four years. After you've served for the minimum of four years, then you get out if you want, if you don't like it. But if you do want to continue to serve, then you, there's the option to extend your contract and continue to serve. So as far as the HCSP goes, the scholarship that I received, um, this scholarship is a lot different. So my scholarship, it does not pay any tuition to the school. Instead, it pays me directly a salary as an E6 um, on active duty. With that, you have all of the active duty benefits. So you get a military ID, uh, which you can use for perks like free bags um, when you're flying, yeah. and also free entrance to different amusement parks or anything like that. So most of you will have less than two years of service when you um, start dental school. Some of you will have more time. Uh, the scholarship that I got, they usually kind of favor prior service for this scholarship because your time in dental school counts and it counts towards retirement. So they expect that if you already have prior service, you're more likely to stay in and retire. Um, however, individuals who don't have prior service, they also receive this scholarship, obviously. So the pay, um, the base pay for an E6 is about $2,500 and that is taxable and that's monthly. And you also will get BAH, which is housing allowance, and that will vary depending on the zip code of your school. And that's also one monthly uh, amount. And so you get paid bi-weekly, and um, your BAH is not taxed. So that's how the pay works for my scholarship. Um, the more time you have in service, the more you are paid um, with your base pay. And also, if you have kids or if you are married, your BAH will also be a little bit more than those who don't have that. Okay, so while you are in dental school, the responsibilities that you have as part of um, accepting this scholarship is that you have to complete a, a PRT, and that's a physical readiness test. And you have to complete that twice per year. I think it's once in the spring and once in the fall. Um, and that is where you would do a 1.5 mile run. And also you would complete two minutes worth of push-ups and two minutes worth of sit-ups. Um, the amount of push-ups and sit-ups that you have to complete as well as the time that you have to complete your run in all depends on your age and sex. And you can look those up 
if you're interested in knowing you know what you would have to complete it in also um, you would have to submit your transcript at the end of every semester and you would have to meet with your recruiter every month um, well you would either talk to them on the phone every month or you would meet face to face every other month so um, with the scholarship like I said they pay you a salary and with that you're supposed to pay the school your tuition directly um, the Navy has nothing to do with your school everything with the school you handle um, so that's how that works um, and you also still have the opportunity to supplement your finances with financial aid um, if you feel like maybe your school is too expensive and this um, salary that you're paid does not cover enough of your tuition or tuition and housing so after you've received the scholarship, um, you can look forward to completing uh, officer development school uh, and depending on the dental school that you attend will dictate when you go to officer development school. So at UDM, we're in school year round. Officer development school is five weeks long. So there's never a point in time where we're out of school for five consecutive weeks. So therefore, once we graduate, we'll have to attend uh, officer development school. So uh, ODS is in Rhode Island. So if you attend a school that uh, you guys have the summers off, then most likely you'll be attending ODS during that time. From what we gather, because obviously we haven't been yet, it's more or less kind of like a basic training style. Uh, they're just kind of getting you acclimated to the military lifestyle. You're already uh, a dentist, but you're not familiar with how the military works and the customs and courtesies of the military. So that's what this, um, what that's what ODS is designed to do to prepare you for military life. We'll make a more in-depth video about officer development school once we have completed it, which will be sometime next year in 2019. So finally, um, once you graduate from dental school, you will commission into the military, whichever branch you choose, you will commission as an O3. We will also be making a video once we graduate um, and kind of get acclimated to military life as a dentist, and we will share with you how that goes. All right, so now that we've kind of gone through the application process uh, and told you guys what to expect while going through that process, I'll kind of go over some of the pros and cons of being a military dentist. Uh, and this is obviously from research and from uh, speaking with other military dentists. Being a military dentist, once you graduate, obviously that's a guaranteed job. So you have a salary. So regardless if you see one patient or if you see 50 patients, you're still going to get paid the same. A lot of people will use the military to kind of hone their skills and to get faster uh, and learn a lot because you're in a multidisciplinary practice as well. So that's another uh, one of the, the benefits. Also, you have malpractice insurance, uh, disability insurance, uh, health insurance, dental insurance, all of that is covered. The health insurance and dental insurance, that's covered for yourself and your family. A portion of your pay is not taxable. And the pay is not uh, not meager, I would say, especially coming uh, straight out of dental school. And also, if you've um, managed this whole uh, scholarship thing well uh, and allowed it to work in your best interest, then you haven't accumulated a lot of debt. So once you uh, do decide to get out of the military, you are not worried about paying back uh, student loans. So uh, those are some of the major, major benefits um, of being a military dentist. And we're definitely looking forward to that opportunity. And we'll let you guys know how our experience plays out. All right. So thank you for watching again. Uh, make sure that if this video was helpful for you, please hit the like button. Um, that will just let us know that we're doing a good job. Also, if you have any questions that maybe we didn't get to um, or something that you just want to know in general, feel free to leave it in the comments below and we'll be sure to get back to you as soon as we can. Um, and as always, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, 
subscribe, um, subscribe, subscribe. That'll just help support us. Um, and it'll also help you know when we have new videos posted. Alrighty, so take care and we will see you next time in our next video. Alright.